What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It's the Earthmaster here on this beautiful Wednesday night, October 19th, 2022. It's about 8 p.m. California time. Latest quake shows a 2.6 over here, striking outside of the Mediterranean area, it looks like. Um, I'm going to bring these models up here a little bit as far as the earthquake frequency goes. All right, let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here from the USGS. We're going to start down here or over here around the California area. Um, no major swarms to note down here around the southern part of the state, but we did see quite a bit of an uptick of earthquake activity around the Cobb Mountain area, uh, Clear Lake Volcanic Fields. Of course, Clear Lake sits up here, Mount Kanoktai. A lot of heated surface or heated magma below the surface here. And I do talk about this a lot, the Calpine hydrothermal operations. And man, did they have a good swarm of earthquakes today. About 109 earthquakes with some magnitudes getting up there uh, in the three range. In fact, we had three mid fives within pretty much within minutes of each other. Uh, 1659, 1702, 1659. So we actually had one there within seconds of each other. So things really kicking up out here. And occasionally we do see this type of activity. I kind of want to bring up here the satellite view and show you guys these hydrothermal operations ongoing down here. There's about 10 of them, or maybe possibly more. There's at least one here. Uh, that's about as close as I can zoom in here on this map. But you notice all throughout this field here, here's another one down here, uh, a couple operations. And I was down there a few months back and they have all of these pipes uh, running alongside the road uh, carrying, I, I don't know what, uh, possibly the raw sewage that is injected down into the heated surface below uh, to create energy. Here's a couple more up here. Um, and they're very close, folks, very close to each other. And these swarms kind of migrate. It uh, looks like another one over here. Maybe that one's not in operation. But they migrate. It seems like uh, all over the place out here. Here's a looks like a couple more over here. Some newer ones, right? Got to create some energy. Got to get rid of that sewage. Goodness. <laughs> so a pretty good swarm of earthquakes out here. Now, a few years back, they had some uh, magnitudes up in the four range that did some damage to some local communities out here. And um, I don't think uh, that was a good thing because I'm pretty certain there was a lawsuit uh, involved against this company out here because of the damage uh, to some of these localized homes out here. And uh, these earthquakes in the three range are not going to do that. But when you get into the four, uh, upper four range, yes, uh, we can get some damage to some uh, some homes and businesses around the area. So let's do a little bit of checking on this volcano out here. And it is. It's called the Clear Lake Volcanic Field. Currently sits as green and alert level normal. Um, I did try to access some of these seismograph stations, and for whatever reason, they're not letting me. Uh, any other volcano I go to and check out the seismographs, I would be able to see it uh, upon clicking on these little icons here. But, yeah, they're not public, publicly accessible for whatever reason right now. Um, I would love to see how many earthquakes are hitting up here. And, and notice they have a lot of seismographs specifically near the calpine hydrothermal operations not anywhere near the the volcano sits up here but they're specifically monitoring this area where all the operations are taking place here um, so just a little summary on the clear lake volcanic field which i've been through here numerous times as a kid and of course as an adult as well uh, the town of clear lake lies within the volcanic field uh, as does much of the forty-three thousand acre freshwater lake of its namesake, Clear Lake, right? Uh, the Geyser Steam Field, which sits at the southwest margin of the volcanic region, is host to one of the world's most productive geothermal power plants, producing enough electricity for eight, uh, 850,000 homes. Uh, the heat driving the geothermal system um, Hold on a second here emanates sorry um, i had a little uh, little pause there for a second uh the heat driving the geothermal system emanates from a zone of partially molten rock magma there we go 
uh, deep below the greater Clear Lake volcanic system. Now, I'm just kind of wondering why the thought crossed my mind here mid-sentence. So I kind of paused for a second um, as to why they don't mention about the sewer being driven down below to create that energy. Maybe, maybe folks don't want to hear about it. I don't know. But uh, I think that's a little on the odd side, but got to get rid of it somehow, I guess. Um, there's a wealth of information on the process of this specific uh, operations down there. Uh, but we're not going to get sp uh, into all of that tonight. If you want to look it up for yourself, go right ahead. But I'm about ready to eat, so I don't really want to hear too much about uh, you know, all that, that stuff. But uh, it's active, you know. Um, when you have that heated, partially molten rock below the surface there, this just tells me that this whole area is still geologically active. Um, and that's, uh, you know, I'd like to see how many earthquakes are taking place here, but for some reason they're not letting us. Um, even the main one right there. Can't remember the exact time this thing blew. Uh, okay, here we go. Most recent eruption about 10,000 years ago. Threat potential is high. So, I wonder, I'd like to know their specific process of how they do it, okay? Because obviously, they are injecting um, stuff down there, the sewage down below the surface. But also, at the, one, at the same time, I'm wondering how much fracturing of the rock is going on down here. Uh, I know there's a fairly large magma chamber in this region. It's got to be. But I'm wondering if we're creating a huge weak spot out here to where we could see a new migration of the volcano or, or far as the uh, magma goes spewing from below. Uh, the geology and history. Let's see what we got for uh, hazards here. Uh, at present, the system appears to be in a lull following a volcanically busy stretch between 60,000 and 10,000 years ago, uh, which looks like an average one eruption every 1,800 years. Uh, so it's currently uncertain what stage of volcanism the, re the region might be undergoing. Intermittent seismic activity and the presence of heat at depth indicate that the system is still active and eruptions are likely, but man, we're tampering with it. I'm not, but humans are uh, if the magma chamber beneath the clear lake field were to were tapped again eruptions might occur in the lake goodness so let's reread that if the magma chamber beneath the clear lake field were tapped again eruptions might occur in the lake these eruptions would be uh oh that's a big word here for me tonight and uh I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that right now. And would pose ashfall and wave hazards to the lakeshore and ashfall hazards to areas within a few kilometers of the vent. Goodness. So future eruptions would be signaled by, of course, heightened earthquake activity. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting little deal here with the uh, with this volcano. I'm kind of, I think I'm a little bit closer here in Northern California to Mount Lassen than I am to Mount, uh, uh, to the Clear Lake volcanic field here, Mount Kanakti. But, uh, man, if that thing ever gets going, I'll definitely go up there and, uh, get a bird's eye view. Uh, deformation activity there at the Clear Lake volcanic field. Uh, continuous recording GPS instrument, instruments are the most used type of... Okay, we get that. There are currently five GPS receivers that make up continuous deformation monitoring network at the Clear Lake field. But obviously, we can't access it. And I attempted to go to this other GPS station here uh, that monitors the activity here. I was just making sure I had everything set up here on my on my OBS software here. As far as the recording goes, still working with the new system. Um, so, yeah, there's really not a whole lot over here um, near the Cobb Mountain region. You got Cobb over here. Uh, most of the activity would be situated out here in this area. There's one GPS station here, and that's just kind of out of the way. It's kind of off to the side, so I would like to see... Uh, at least have access here to this to the GPS station specifically around 
the area where they're injecting the sewage. Uh, a little bit of uplift back in 2014, it looks like, and um, gradual downtrend over the past few years. Northward movement, of course, along with the plate boundary, and uh, eastward is dropping. But uh, goodness, there was just a lot of activity there today. Gas concentrations here. When I was up there, I didn't really smell. Actually, I take that back. I did smell some, uh, a lot of sulfur type stuff while I was up there. Of course, that's very typical, right? Around a volcano. I guess the uh, measurements and the recordings would have to uh, be looked at in terms of, uh, you know, how much uh, sulfur is in the air. So, on that note, uh, definitely seeing quite a bit of earthquake activity out there today. And, uh, of course, swarms like that are very common, but I can't help but think of what we're, uh, you know, what the potential outcome could be. Uh, I'm sure they've gone through a scenario, but, you know, tapping into uh, heated areas below, you know, kind of drilling down there, I'm sure. Maybe creating one giant weak portion of the crust here. That just wouldn't be a good scenario. All right, uh, what else we got? Pacific Northwest, not a whole lot going on up there. Let's go ahead and check out the trimmer map tonight. Uh, Cascadia trimmer, where are you? There we are. And uh, there's not a whole lot, even on the Cascadia. A little bit there in Oregon and way up north around the Vancouver Island ranges. Other than that, things very calm across the uh, Cascadia for now. And only a couple small little specks of some earthquakes there at Mount St. Helens. And um, that's about it there. The rest of California, as I mentioned just a minute ago, things very spotty. One earthquake here on the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault. A little point eight near the Parkfield area. Some movement throughout Utah as well and into Yellowstone. Give a quick glance here of the Yellowstone overviews and uh, we'll see what we got here. Still some earthquake activity, obviously. This has been an ongoing thing for uh, several weeks now. No major changes, though, noted. I've not seen any type of uh, major uptick or incredible, uh, incredibly large magnitudes happening. It's all basically below 2.0. Outside of Pecos, a little activity out there in the uh, desert of Texas. One up here around Oklahoma as well. Nothing major going on across the eastern portion of the country. Around the Caribbean plate, things pretty minor. Only a handful of quakes here around Puerto Rico. And the South America region all looking pretty quiet as well. Into Alaska, nothing showing up here over the last hour. Most of the movement here, all microquakes across the Cook Inlet and through portions of the, um, looks like the Castle Mountain fault zone there outside of Anchorage. On the Big Island, lighten up here a little bit in Pahala. Mostly twos it looks like over the last couple hours or so. Only 21 earthquakes listed up here on the map. So we really can't, we haven't really come out of this little lull of activity or lack of activity, I should say. Uh, even looking at the general uh, plates around the Western Pacific, Indonesia Islands area. Uh, I believe this activity here was from uh, earlier this morning time frame. Looks like we did have a 4.6 this afternoon. Uh, about 112 kilometers deep here. Just uh, This is kind of a mix of a plate boundary. Just south here of this plate boundary. And some older ones listed up here around the Philippines little activity outside of the uh, India area as well near Nepal 4.9 looks like that's in the uh, Himalayas area major plate boundary and uh, one earthquake down here in the African region looks like uh, Republic of the Congo Tanzania area 10 kilometers for that 4.1 Atlantic Ocean, this one here is from, oh, I believe, older, much earlier this morning. In fact, overnight, uh, that 5.6. South Sandwich Islands, about the same there. Uh, some older movement. So, again, a little little period of quietness here, folks. And uh, I can't really think it's going to last. It shouldn't really last too long. I know we do get days of quietness, but uh, it can't go 
on forever like this. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Earthquakes Canada. I don't believe they're having any major activity up there. Looks like a couple small earthquakes up into the Alaska region. A little 2.7. One down here in the BC area in the red circle. But other than that, things are just very minor uh, across the entire North American continent. Uh, let's see what else we got here solar weather real quick and I'm gonna get off here and uh, enjoy the rest of my movie here with Missy Mimi's down she goes look at that speed way down density way down everything going down here folks solar weather activity in a in a pretty big lull as well there's the latest imagery right here of the uh, coronal hole it's kind of turning into the view here of earth but again not positioned perfectly uh, for a setup that would provide some solar wind stream from that coronal hole i think that's going to miss us to the south we'll definitely keep an eye on it see if uh, anything changes right now three day looks pretty bleak uh, green across the board no major threats for the flare department and looking around the bin uh let's see what we got here maybe a little sunspot back here you guys see that little bit and you can kind of see it on the other imagery here way over here on the northeastern side of the of the sun that may be a spot to watch hopefully fingers crossed because i'm not a big fan of boring <laughs> boring solar weather or weather in general i don't i don't like boring weather sunshine and man what do we hit today portions of northern california hit 100 degrees today folks I advise people not to move to California unless you like uh, extreme heat well into the middle of October, almost the end of October. But uh, we do have some cooling temperatures on the way. Um, supposed to be back in the 70s here in a couple days, which is more, more October-like, I should say, for this area. But uh, hope, hoping today was the last 90-day 90 degree day that we'll have to deal with here in northern california i'm just not not too fond of that all right guys so earthquake activity listed up on the map um emsc of course is included in here as well um yes i have the emsc 2.5 and above i don't have a lot of the smaller quakes listed up here on the map we are getting some ones up here off the coast of morocco it looks like a little bit of a swarming um, all this is EMSC data uh, being reported here. Uh, also, I did read a couple comments about the seismograph stations over here, bottom left side. I know these uh, words were kind of hard to read. They were a little tiny, and I'm still kind of adjusting the uh, resolution here with the uh, broadcasting software for YouTube. And it's giant on my end, but apparently it was pretty small. Uh, on the uh, viewer side so i did amplify this up a little bit you guys should be able to read these a little bit better petrolia uh station there in chile mount st helens washington some of these stations there fiji and japan are not operational right now they just went down seems like a, a couple hours ago but they should come back uh, and then of course yellowstone here a little bit of spiky activity showing up there around the lake yellowstone station but uh, either way hopefully you guys can read it a little bit just a little bit better there all right folks have a good night stay safe and uh we'll chat you guys sometime tomorrow have a good one peace out